Hello and welcome back. This is Frankie again and we're going to be doing another auto hotkey tutorial. This time we're doing functions. Um, for this tutorial it's expected that you know what a variable is and some basic expression stuff which uh, I believe that was all covered in one video, one tutorial uh, a few videos ago. Okay. So uh, there's two ways to think of a function if you've never done any programming before. Uh, at least two ways that come to my mind and how I can understand it. And one way is like a math function. And that's, you have, um, this could be a math function here. We have the function of n is 5n plus 100. So if, if n was 1, it would be 105 in this example. And, um, and that's, that's how it works. You have an input value, in this case it's n, and then it does some stuff inside the function, and then it gives you your output value. In AutoHotKey and other languages, we can do the same sort of thing, but it's not written uh, quite like this. This is how you'd write that same thing. Um, if we just fix this. This is how you'd write that uh, in AutoHotKey. So we have, in this case, we're calling, we're seeing the function of a, which we come up here and we set to 10, and we're... Um, yeah, we're, we're checking what the function of 10 is in our example. So we call our function here, and what we're doing is we're passing a, and then if we look back up further, a equals 10. So we're calling our function, and we're saying, what's the value if we give it 10? And then we come down to our function here. This right here is our function uh, definition. This is a function call. So we're going to our function definition, and, um, sorry, this was from something else. And we're saying, okay, we're going to take n, multiply it by 5, and add 100 to that. So this gets evaluated, as you'd expect, uh, just as it would in the other case. So if, if we passed 1 to the function, we'd get 105, like we said. And then it does this thing called a return. And what a return is, is it says, all right, we're done with our function. We're going to leave the function. And if you put a value after it, um, it passes this value back. And it's sort of like like this function is substituted. This function call is substituted by the value. So wherever you put your function call, um, what AutoHotKey does is it goes, calls your function, and it gets the return value. And it's almost like it copies and pastes it here. So it's almost like, like it does that, and then it'll put 105 there or in uh, this case, 150, I believe. So we're going to just try that, and we're going to run it, okay? And we get 150, and let me just close this, sorry. Okay, and then we, we could change our A, and our A could be 90, and we get a different result, 550, okay? So uh, we have the same function, and it can do different things with different inputs. And that's the idea behind a function is you write it once and then you can use it uh, as many times as you want, even if it's in a different file, which we'll, uh, we'll see how that works if we have time. Um, the other way that I like to think of it, and I think I prefer this way, it's uh, you're asking a question. <clears throat> so we take our function and uh, we ask a question. So in this case, we're asking, what is the answer to? And then we have these things called parameters. In our other example, our parameter was A, which was 10 or 90. In this case, we're passing strings. So we're saying, what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? All right, so this gets passed in here. So life, when we call our function, A has life in it. B has the universe and C has everything. So there's a lot of uh, this this like copy and paste kind of thing going on internally where it's saying, all right, we're gonna replace A with life and the universe with B and all that. And when we return it, it replaces this function with our return value. Uh, it'll make more sense as you get uh, more practice with it. In this case, we're taking all these values and we're making, oh, we're making a string and that's gonna be our response. The answer to life, the universe, and everything is 42. Okay. So then, that's um 
that's one way to think of it, and I prefer that way. It makes the most sense to me. Um, there's a few more things I want to cover, and one of them is called globals. And um, when you're inside a function, if we go back to this previous one, you see how we're making this answer variable here. If we go up here after our function's called, and we check the value of answer, it's never set in this, it's called a scope. It's never set in this scope. It's only inside the function. And once we get to this ending brace here, the end of this uh, curly bracket thing, that's the end of our function and everything inside of this function just gets uh, cleared from memory. It's like uh, it wasn't even there. And so you don't have to worry about answer getting, if you have answer as something outside the function, you don't have to worry about the function overwriting it with this string. So sometimes you want that though. <clears throat> sometimes you'll say, all right, I want the function to do something and be able to change things outside of the function. And uh, the easiest way to do that, not always the best, but the easiest way to do that is we say global. And uh, if you just put global like this, every variable inside your function is global. But if we want to be a little more selective, we can say global var. So now var is going to be global. All right. And then we can work on it as if this was like, as if this was right here instead of inside our function. So we're going to see how that works. We start var at five and then we call inc or increment var uh, four times. And then we check the value of var. And you see uh, we added 5 to it each time, and now it is 25. But if we get rid of this global line, remember var starts at 5, and we run our script, it's still 5, because this is a local variable to our function. It's not changing anything outside of our function. Actually, this function does nothing, really. Uh, it sets a variable, and then it forgets about it. This would be a very pointless function. And um, there's other ways to do this, though, as well. So one of those ways to keep a value and not affect anything outside of a function is called a static variable. So you see here, we don't set any variables out here in the main part of our program. We don't set any variables. Rather, we just call this count function, and it keeps counting and then we say message box count. Uh, so we run this and we see we called it six times so it has six as the value. right? But we don't have that variable out here. If we get rid of this function, if we hide it, right? we don't know what it's doing inside of there. All we know is that it's keeping a count and we know that we can call count and get the count. But what it's doing inside, if we want to look a little closer, is you see we have a static variable called counter and each time we say counter equals counter plus one so we're adding one to it each time and we also return it so that we can check the value now um, what static does here is when the program loads when we when we hit our run button here and uh, the program loads it does this default action so it'll say it'll assign counter to zero and that happens once, only one time. And then every time we call this function, it does the rest of the code in here. So that's uh, one way to store information. The problem is there's no way to get it outside of your function. There's no other way to see this counter variable. Um, as we go along and do uh, some more advanced things like, like uh, objects and classes and stuff like that, we'll see how we can how we can store information and have only the functions be able to see it and have it kind of be out of the way. Um, but for right now, this is this is one way to do it. But the best way, I think, is either just returning a value like we did here, where we just say return answer. That's one way to get information back. But sometimes you'll have multiple values that you want to return or set or anything or just a variable you want to modify. So we said we could do the global, the global thing, right? But the problem with global 
is that we don't choose which variable we want it to change. Um, the function only knows about one variable that we can change. And so if you want to, uh, what do we do here? We're incrementing a variable. What if we want to increment foo or bar or any other variable we have instead of there? Well, one way to do that is called by reference passing. So we're passing a reference to our variable. Uh, you don't really need to worry about how that works, but we go by ref and var reference. All right, it doesn't matter what you call it, but it's what you're gonna use in here. All right, and then we'll say var ref equals var ref plus uh, 2.3. We're gonna add 2.3 each time. Okay, and then when we come up here, we can tell it what variable we want it to work on. So it's gonna work on var. And we're gonna have v2 is gonna be our other variable. All right, so we can call this a bunch of times. Sometimes we can call it on v2 and sometimes on var. And um, so it can work on both of these. And we're just gonna make another message box to show v2. So we run this, should probably give it a value. We're gonna start it off at six. Run this. So this is our var is 9.6, uh, cause we started at five and added 2.3 twice. And our other one is 8.3. We started at six and added 2.3 once. So it's just, it's a way to work on uh, multiple variables, even if you don't know what the variables are gonna be. And there's one more major topic um, with functions and that's calling other people's functions. So you can call, um, there's built-in functions to AutoHotKey. For example, this substring or sub str. And what that does is it gets you part of a, a string of text. So we're gonna do this little demo here and you see it, uh, we have an input box. So we're gonna save some text to the variable sum text. And then we're gonna call our trim to function and give it the parameters. And in our trim to function, we call another function. This is built-in function. This is one that we made up ourselves. So inside there, we're gonna do some, some magic calculations or whatever, and we're gonna return the result. The result gets put here, and then we add just some dot, dot, dots to it since we're trimming it and we wanna show that it's been trimmed. So we can uh, open our input box here, and we're gonna type, this is cool. And you see how it trims it to our six characters that we gave here. So uh, that's in uh, built-in functions. And since we have all of this stuff in the same folder, because that's how I happen to use it, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do something called an include. And what include is, is we're taking another script and it, it, like, it does that copy and paste thing again, which seems to be a theme here. It does that copy and paste and it takes that script and puts it at our include. So we're gonna say include answer to .ahk, which is our file right here. So we're gonna include that. So it takes all of this and it copies and pastes it into, a, into our other program. And we don't have to worry about about all that extra stuff. So now we just have a two line program here and we can run it. Um, all right, I'm sure I made some, oh, we're gonna paste this in a different file, sorry. That's not in the same folder, all right. Okay, and then you see, we just have two lines of code and all the other code is in another file. And that's one way to keep organized if you're doing something, some kind of large script, or if you're using someone else's code, you can just put their code somewhere else and just say, we want to include it. And the restrictions, you have to have a, the path to it. So if we open, all right, you see everything is in the same. We have our mathfunk.ahk, and we also have 
our answer to. They're in the same folder. Otherwise, we'd have to do other kinds of things uh, to get it to find it. But uh, that's kind of the, the gist of functions. That's how they work, and that's how that's how you use them. And um, we talked about built-in functions that substring a little bit. Um, there's a whole list of them in the documentation. You can just uh, you can find it. You search for functions, uh, the functions page, and it has all these built-in functions, as well as more information about how you call functions. Uh, it's more detailed. It has lots of examples. So definitely take a look at that, and uh, keep watching these videos. If you haven't seen the ones before this, you should probably watch them because. Um, Moving forward, we're going to expect we're going to expect you to know those things. We're going to expect variables and and when to use the the percentage signs and all that. So uh, make sure you have you have those other videos down. And you understand what they're talking about because uh, we're going to expect functions to be known coming up soon. All right, uh, that's it for this video, and thanks for watching. Bye.